Alright, so at first glance, this seems to deviate a little bit from the content that I ordinarily produce on this channel. And you're not partial you're partially correct in the sense that we're not necessarily talking about why a waifu is valuable like we normally would. But this does tie into my content in the sense that we're talking about argumentation. And the way I like to structure my worthy waifus videos and any other video I'd like to produce on this channel is it's a logical argument. It's not really so much an opinion. Sure, I can make a contention about Zero Two and how she has pink hair and that's adorable, but I don't opt for arguments like that because, I gener because they're generally opinions. And I'm trying to make a logical point for why she would be debated to be a worthy waifu. And through these videos where I show you how to improve your debate premises, your debate claims, your, your debate cases overall, the goal is to help you go from a person who makes an opinionated piece in terms of a debate to a person that makes a more formal debate case. So for this video, we're going to be talking about improving your debate claim. But if you check my videos and you see, oh, he hasn't made anything on this topic of how to form a debate, then comment in the comments below right now. If there's a video you'd like to see on how to improve something in your debate repertoire, post it in the comments right now and I will give it a deep thought on if I should make a video on it, and I probably will because I'm sure all of you people out there have really good ideas. But let's focus on the here and now and go into my three tips on how to improve your debate claim. So for my first tip, or no, we're not even at the tips yet, we're discussing what a claim is or what a thesis is in a debate. So for the first thing you need to know is what it is before you can even properly construct it. Now, the, the formal definition for a debate claim is a thesis statement is a one to two sentence statement that presents the main idea and makes an assertion about your issue. You may have a longer thesis for longer essays, but one or two sentences is a general guideline. So a claim is very similar to the thesis statement we learn about in middle school and high school and all other rising grades. In fact, they're basically the same thing. So my simpler definition of it is that a thesis is the main position you're arguing, arguing with supporting details. So that overarching idea that you are supporting through evidence is your claim. An example I have for a claim is Goku is the strongest character in fiction. It establishes what the argument is going to be. Now there's two things you need to know about a claim slash thesis right now, and that it is, in my opinion, the most important part of your argument, and here's why. The first reason is that you can lose an argument without even being able to present your case. Because if you present a bad claim, then the person can argue against the A, evidence you're using to support that claim, and B, the validity of your claim before the discussion of why you believe that is even in the conversation. In a regular conversation, having a bad claim can easily be communicated through, is this actually what you mean, or whatever, whatever. But in a debate, your primary goal isn't really to properly communicate what you two are trying to say. The point is to say something that is factual and correct, and to win by being the more factually incorrect. So if you present a bad claim, that's just another bullet you're giving your opponent to use against you. But instead of giving your opponent the bullet with a bad claim, you're giving your opponent a loaded sniper rifle and you're standing there begging them to attack you with it. It is not good to have a bad claim. In fact, no, it's not even not good. It is detrimental to your victory in a debate to learn how to properly establish a claim. Because if you don't, you're not even going to get to the debate part because you've already lost. And the second reason is that your claim needs to be supportable, i.e. you need to have evidence supporting your claim. And the quality of your claim will determine how much evidence you can provide, what type of evidence you're going to provide, and the volume of evidence you will have to pull from to make your argument the most effective it can. So what I'm basically saying here is that one, your, you, your claim determines if you're going to be even debating at all. And two, the potential of your case is rested on the foundation of your claim. These are two very important factors you need to think about and why you need to work hard at making a very good claim. I can't
cannot stress that enough. It's important. So now we know what a claim is. So how do we construct one that's good? Well, let's get to the tips. So the first tip I have for all of you to make the best possible claim is to be aware of all the claim types and when you should use them. So your claim type is basically deciding the context in which you're arguing. So knowing what type of argument you're making is just you being an informed debater and knowing and having complete control of your entire argument because the types I'm about to tell you also dictate what type of evidence you'll be defending with. So having knowledge of your claim type, what type you're aiming to create and why are all really important because you can't just blindly create a claim without knowing what type it is or else you're not going to know what you're doing. So I'm now going to go through all the types of claims so that you properly know what the types are. The first type of claim is a claim of fact or definition, which is basically an argument determining what defines something. What is this? An example of this claim would be, is the dress black or white? We are defining what color the dress is through evidence. The second type of claim is a cause and effect claim, and we're determining if one event directly causes another, basically creating a link between the two concepts. An example of this, does secondhand smoke lead to lung cancer? Now, one thing you have to be very, very careful with in this context is that you need to choose something that is debatably not true. For example, the, the source I got this from, their example was the one I read, but the, a bad version of the cause and effect claim would be, does smoking firsthand lead to lung cancer? Making that kind of claim, there's, there's a certain degree of how debatable something is. And I can't tell you how debatable that is. You have to be the gauge for yourself, but you have to find a line where you tell yourself this is controversial enough and this isn't accepted enough to where I can debate it and it doesn't sound like I'm being a conspiracy theorist. Because if you make a claim that's so so unlinked that there's no way to define that line of logical reasoning, then you're making a, it's going to be a really tough time for you. So like I said, if you're going to make a cause and effect claim, make sure you're making it debatable not going against something that is objectively linked or not so just something to be aware of the next claim is a solution slash policy claim and this claim is there's a problem in the world poverty racism etc and this is the solution i would take to solve that example removing soda machines will help address obesity the problem is stated as obesity Removing the soda machines is the solution to that problem. This one's pretty clear cut. And the final type of claim is the claim of value. Does the thing in question hold importance? Does it matter? And an example of this are all of my worthy waifu videos. These are all debates of value because the evidence I'm using is factual reasoning for why a waifu is in fact valuable. Now. I've gone through a brief idea of why you want to know what all of these are, but I'm going to just hit more on it really fast before we move to the next slide. Knowing the types of claims will allow you to decide what claim is best for your given context. Every claim topic can be argued by all four of these metrics, but knowing which one of these contexts is best for your given topic will make you that much better as a debater because your premise will be more focused, your evidence will be geared towards optimally arguing your argument. This knowledge is a weapon that can put you above the rest of them and make your claim and your argument as a whole the best structured it can be. And that's why this first tip is really important for you because it'll let you optimize your entire case based on your topic. All right. For tip two, this is really important, and I can actually show you how to practically improve um, a premises or a claim's wording directly in this one. So this one is be specific with your wording and scope. And why this is important is 
just changing a little bit of your phrasing and the words you choose can significantly lower the burden of proof that you need to prove to make your point. And here's an example of that. The first example is is my example of an inferior one, and that is that Rinse Tosaka is the best waifu ever. To prove this claim, you're gonna have to compare Rin to every waifu from every series, in every anime, every aspect, and establish a really strong, beefy case on why she is objectively the best, and that is very hard to do, versus claiming that Rin Tosaka is just a worthy waifu. Now, yes, this is my video title, and yes, it could be shameless plugging, but that's not the point because this claim is simple and it's very provable. I'm establishing my proof of value by saying worthy. I'm saying she's worthy of being waifu. I'm just saying that she has worth. I'm not saying how much worth. That's up to the person to decide based on my arguments. It's easy to prove. And using your wording like these examples to make the most provable argument you can is just another way to increase the quality of your debate claim. This final tip may sound a bit cliche and like I'm kind of phoning it in. And it's a little different from the other two, but I really do mean it when I say that this tip is important and I'll tell you why. Make a claim that you care about, that has some, just any importance to you, something that you actually can agree with. You can agree with the evidence behind it, you can agree with the claim itself, but for the love that's all and holy, please do not make an argument about something you have zero passion for, because I t I'll tell you how 90% of those arguments go. You won't have any passion, so you won't construct a logical argument around it, you'll just go off the cuff and use some random things your brain tricks up, and they could be very smart. I'll say that right now. People can off the cuff make some very strong opinions, but they're not strong enough generally to hold a debate with someone that actually knows what they're talking about. So please, please make an argument about something you actually care about. If someone's making an argument with something you agree on, for example, and their evidence you disagree with, that's a source of passion you can derive from and use it to have a debate. But if it's just them making an argument and you honestly couldn't get, care about what opinion is represented, then just don't make a counterclaim. This is a tip not necessarily about constructing a claim, but about why you should construct a claim and therefore it's relevant for this video. Do your passion. Don't just rival rouse to rival rouse. You won't really have much fun with it. And honestly, your friends around you won't like it either. I know from personal experience, please don't do it. Don't be that guy. Well, that's all the tips I have for you today on debate claims. Follow these instructions and your debate claims will be much stronger than they were originally. And honestly, much stronger than a lot of people you'll actually have arguments with because the common folk don't know about these tricks, but now you do. So use them to your advantage. Please like the video if you learned something valuable and just enjoyed the content. If you didn't like it, dislike. Put a comment down below about what I can improve to make my videos better for all my viewers. And I'll see you in the next one.